reign in this life through Christ Jesus. Now when you get to heaven, there's nothing to reign about up there, but to reign in this life. He's given us abundance of grace, and, and this is not a message, <laughs> but he's given us abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that you might reign. Reign. You know, the Bible says how that you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Which means that you are in the world, but you are not to be confined by the limitations that the world is confined by. Amen? We don't have the limitations that the world have. We are, to, we are above only and not beneath. Amen? We have been raised up together with Christ. And we are overcomers. We are over the world. We are over those limitations. And we must not allow unbelief and what if and buts to limit the great and the mighty God that lives on the inside of you. Amen? And he wants to reign and he says that you can reign in life through him. Now that word reign means to be superior to, to be superior to, to be above and beyond. In other words, God is saying he has given unto you in Christ abundance of grace, abundance of enablement, an abundance of his power and sufficiency, and the free gift of righteousness, being right with him, being one with him, having his life, having the authority in the name of Jesus, amen, being free from insecurity and all of that, he's given you and I abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that you might be superior, that you might live above the circumstances and the situations that we face constantly. Think about it. God wants you and I to reign in this life, which means to live above circumstances. To be superior to circumstances. To not be confined and boxed in. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He's not confined. Glory to God. We, we must not allow ourselves to be confined and to be bunged up and to be limited, whether it be by the limitations of others, whether it be by the controlling spirits of others, whether it be by insecurity, whether it be by intimidation, all of these things can confine you. Intimidation can put you in a box. Being controlled can put you in a box. Insecurity, inferiority, condemnation, fear. These are things that Jesus came to set us free from so that we might not have those limitations. Are you with me? Amen? Say, I'm a king. And I have dominion. And I reign. I am superior to my circumstances. I live above my circumstances. My circumstances and situations will not dictate to me. I am in charge through Christ to reign in my life through Christ. Thank God I have the free gift, free gift of the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And the abundance of God's grace is available, is available to me and flows through this channel of righteousness so that I can have the God kind of life, eternal life in this earth. Hallelujah. Say, I reign. I'm a king. I am a king. Yes, I'm a king. And I do reign. I have dominion. I'm not dominated. I dominate in the name of Jesus. Now you see, here is a paradox. Or, or maybe it isn't a paradox because it really is no contradiction. On the one hand, here we are, we have dominion and we reign. We have dominion. Oh, what a powerful word. Let them have dominion. And here we have dominion. Yet at the same time, in the midst of our, of our having a dominion, we also have the mind of Christ. And this mind of Christ, the way it operates, is so that I esteem others better than I do myself. This mind of Christ taught it not robbery to be equal with God and didn't think equality with God is something to be grasped. But he made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a, of a servant. Being found as a man, he became obedient even unto death. So here he is. Here you and I are. We have dominion. 
I'm a king. I have dominion, but yet I'm clothed with humility. Amen? And there is no contradiction. There really is no contradiction. Because it is as we humble ourselves that we have the power to resist the devil. And he flees from us. It is as we submit to God that we have the power to cause the devil to run off. It is as we yield to the truth. Amen? It is as we humble ourselves and as we not exalt ourselves, but rather humble ourselves and take, not the, and, and take, well, in some ways take the high road. <laughs> but as we humble ourselves, that is what gives God the freedom to manifest himself in us and through us and flow. Because he says, if you humble yourself, I will lift you up. Amen? Hallelujah. So say, I'm a king. I have dominion. And I'm clothed with humility. Amen? Praise the Lord. God is good. Well, hallelujah. Amen. I think we're ready to receive the offering now. <laughs> Amen? So let's do that and then we'll go to the word. <laughs> and then we go to the message. Amen. No, I'm not confused. I'm just following whatever the leading that I have. Amen. So if you had that, so, so, so perish that thought. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. In other words, we are to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope for your giving, praise God forevermore. Amen. That's a good word. I reign. Say I reign. Say it again. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord and the free gift of righteousness is what makes you reign. It's what makes you superior to the negative circumstances, the bad economy, and the world's limitations. The fact that the blessing of the Lord that make it you rich, the blessing of the Lord that is on your life, the blessing of the Lord that is on your life so as to produce the lifestyle of the Garden of Eden in your life. Joshua chapter 1. Now, This morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share and talk about meditating God's Word, biblical meditation. Now, it might not sound like an exciting topic, but it is an exceedingly important topic. So many times, you know, I've heard myself saying to folks that if you can take the Word of God that applies to your situation and cause that Word to be manifest, Cause the seed, that word of God, that promise of God that is as a seed, if you can take that seed and grow it and have it become a tree, then the fruits that it would bear would be the answer to your situation. Amen? In other words, if you can take by a strap some heel and have that seed totally grow up in your life, then you will be made whole. And any situation, whether it, whatever the situation is, there is always a promise of God that if we could get that promise manifested, we will have total victory. The Bible says there is no word of God that is void of power. There is no word of God that, that, that lacks the ability within itself to bring itself to pass. Luke 1, 37. So if I could get the word of God and get the word to bring itself to pass, I have my victory. You have your victory. And it's wonderful to be able to preach that and to share that. But then the question comes back, how do I do that? How do I take that scripture and grow it up? It's nice to say, well, you know, you plant it in your heart and then you, you know, and you confess it and you, you water it and eventually it will grow up. First you'll have the blade, then you'll have the tree, then you'll have the full corn in the air, and then you put in the sick. And it's nice to say that. But how do you do that? Amen. And that question has come up and I felt, you know, this question needs to be answered. You need to know how do I get this scripture to become a reality, to get this scripture to be manifest in my life. Is that important to you? Amen? So that is what I want to talk about. And I do believe the answer to that question is biblical meditation. Learning to meditate in God's word. Amen? So that's what we're going to be talking about. And um, my objective today... Is four things, so to speak. First, my first objective is to somehow impress upon you the importance of meditating in God's Word. 
Secondly, to give you an understanding of what meditating in God's word entails. What is it? And then thirdly, how do you meditate in God's word? And then finally, that you might be motivated and go and do it. Now, the doing it part is your part. Amen? I can't do that for you. No one can. But my part today is to convince you, if I can convince you by the grace of God and the power of God and the anointing of God and the truth of God's word, that meditation is important. What meditation is and how do you meditate in the word? And then you are going to go and do it. Amen? Say, I'm going to do it. Amen. Now here we see in Joshua chapter 1, let's read from verse 1. It says, um, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them and to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou shalt have good success." There's another version that says, and then you shall deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen? Now, here we see a situation. God says to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, Moses and God is saying, Joshua, you need to take, you need to take over the leadership of these people from Moses because Moses is now dead. Not only are you to take over the leadership, but you are to take them across into the promised land and to divide unto them this inheritance. Moses was a great man of God. Moses walked in such prosperity that he had several million, I don't know, two, three million people with him, and they had nothing to eat, and he was able to, because of his covenant relationship with God, he, and, and his heart was so established in that relationship with God, that covenant relationship with God, he was able to access his relationship with God and, 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 uh, and, and, and be able to have provisions to feed several, three, four million people. Would you say that's prosperity? Prosperity is when you can tap in to the resources of God to meet the needs of humanity. That's true prosperity. Are you with me? Moses was able to do that. If the people needed water, Moses was able to come up with it. Whatever it was, Moses had the answer. So now Joshua has to take over for Moses. This is a huge responsibility. And not only that, but Joshua must also take the people across to the promised land and divide onto them the inheritance. If Joshua is to fail, if Joshua is to fail, and these people go over there and they're wiped out, then what would happen? Would the Messiah be able to even get here? No. In other words, then, there are spiritual implications that are riding on, on, on Joshua's success or failure. Amen? And there are natural implications as well. And so God says, so God gives, now you would think that God might say, well, Joshua, this responsibility is so great and I need for you to succeed. The people need for you to succeed. You need to succeed. And the generations to come, which is the church, need for you to succeed. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to fast, I want you to fast often. 
I want you to spend time and seek my face. I want you to spend this portion of time in prayer, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do that. God didn't give him any of those formulas. What did God say to him? God said to Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you might observe to do to, uh, that you might observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success, or as another translation says, you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. The advice that God gave Joshua in this critical situation was, Joshua, I want you to meditate in the Word, and if you do that, you will observe to do according to all that is in it, and you're going to make your way prosperous and have good success. Amen? Now, incidentally, now notice, this meditation was going to produce several things. One of the things this meditation was going to produce is not only was it going to make Joshua prosperous, but it was going to make Joshua prosperous to the extent will be prosperous in the wisdom of God and knowing how to deal with things wisely that he was going to be a blessing to the people and to divide unto them the inheritance. It is very important for us to remember that. Later on, you will see in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15, Paul tells Timothy to meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly unto them, for then you will make your way, for then you will um, make your way prosperous and have good success No. For then you will be profitable. It will be profitable unto you and to all them that hear you. In other words, God told, Paul told Timothy that if you would meditate and give yourself wholly to the word of God, immerse yourself in it, not only would it be profitable to you, but it's going to be profitable to the people. Amen? And I'm saying to you today that if you and I learn to meditate in the word of God, not only would it be profitable to us, but uh, because of what is going to be flowing out of us, it will be also profitable to those around us. In Isaiah, actually, Isaiah puts it this way. You don't need to turn there. But in Isaiah, it puts it this way in, in verse 11 and 12. God will be able to guide you continually, satisfy your soul in drought. When there's a drought out there, you don't have to have a drought. And he will make, you f and he will make fat your bones. And you will be like a watered garden. That sounds like Eden. What's that? That's Isaiah 58 and verse 11. You will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Amen? In other words, there might be lack, there might be problems in the economy, there might be drought, but, but it's not going to affect you. You're going to be able to reign and you're going to be able to be superior to what's going on. And the economy, you could be independent of it. And they, and you, and they shall be and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, and you shall raise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of pathways to dwell in. In other words, your meditating in the word of God successfully not only will bless you, but it will make you like a watered, like a well-watered garden, and you'll be able to be a greater blessing to others. Amen? So... Meditation is important. Now, let me give you a couple of reasons. Number one, it will produce success and prosperity. Su success and prosperity. But let me mention this. God said this to, Moses, to um, Joshua, As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And I will not leave you, I will not forsake you, I will not fail you. What verse is that? Verse 5. I will, I will be with you, I will not fail you, I will not forsake thee. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Now, hear this. God being with you and manifesting himself to you and through you is the major key to prosperity and success. Are you with me? God being with you. The Bible says all things are possible to who? To them that believe. And with God, all things are possible. So when you believe right, you find yourself being in a position where you're with God. And when you're with God, all things become possible to you. Are you with me? When you are with God through your right believing, all things become possible unto you. And if all things are possible unto you, I don't know any other way. I cannot think of a better way to define success other than all things being possible unto you. Are you with me? And meditating is going to bring you into a place of believing so that you will operate with God. So God says to Moses, to, to Joshua, I am with you. 
But then now here was Joshua's responsibility. Meditate. Because as he meditates in the word of God, what will happen is he's going to be able to operate with God and God will be able to manifest himself in him and through him. When we get to how to meditate a little bit further on, one of the things we will see is that you don't just meditate just for the sake of it. You are meditating to find God in the word. You are meditating because God and his word are one. And we will find that when you learn to, to, that when you are in the presence of the word of God, you are in the presence of God himself because God and his word are one. And that is one of the things you're going to need to know as you come into meditation is that, is that you will find there are two conditions that are important to be able to meditate in the word of God successfully. Number one is you have to respect the word of God, respect the integrity of God's word, magnify the word of God above all else, know that God's word is true. Amen? That's number one. You know, the Bible says, I, 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 I tremble before his word. You got to have that reverential respect and, and honor for God's word. You can't be seeing God's word and say, yeah, I don't believe that. Or, or yeah, that's, I know that's in the Bible, but that's not how, I, that's not how I've been taught. You can't have that kind of attitude. There are people that actually would say that. Do you know that? Not anybody here, right? And that I know that's, yeah, 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 that's in the Bible, but that's, but that's not how I've been brought up. That's not how I believe it. That's not how I've been taught. Well, if you have that kind of attitude, you're not in the right place to start with. Because to start with, a condition is you got to delight yourself in the Word of God. you got to highly esteem it. So that's one of the conditions. A second condition is to recognize that, that Jesus comes to give, the devil comes to steal. And to recognize the devil is a thief. Amen. All right. So anyway, getting back to this. So success and prosperity has to do with being with God. With God and meditating will bring you into that place now, um, so that you can deal wisely in the affairs of life. Okay, let me let me emphasize this a little bit further. Here is what's important. You see, God has a covenant. Isaiah fifty-four verse ten causes a covenant of peace, which means a covenant of wholeness. That covenant that God has is a covenant of prosperity. It's a covenant where God wants to make you whole. God wants you to walk in the blessing. God wants you prosperous. God wants you healed. God wants you well. God wants you to have a sung mind. It is a covenant of peace, a covenant of wholeness. And it includes prosperity. It includes divine protection. Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells you a lot of things. That if you would just walk with God and obey God and, and so on and so forth, you'll be the head and not the tail. Above only, not beneath. Blessed going in, blessed coming out. The blessing of the Lord will follow you. It will chase after you. It will tackle you to the ground. Amen? <laughs> Literally. It will tackle you. Wouldn't you like the blessing of the Lord to tackle you? Overtake you? Wait, you just got to give up. Okay, all right, I'm blessed then. I accept it. <laughs> Amen? But that's what a covenant wants to do in your life. The covenant is so much a covenant of blessing and prosperity that God says in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 that you must remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth that he might establish his covenant as he has sworn. He is giving you the power to get wealth. Why? So that he might establish his covenant. Amen? And that covenant is a covenant of prosperity. Now, it is a covenant of success. And again, when we're talking prosperity, we're not just talking about money. Of course, it includes that. Now, here is the thing. God has a covenant, and that covenant is established. That covenant is so established that the Bible says, for instance, in, um, it says in Psalms 119 and verse 8 and 9, His word is forever settled in heaven. It says in Psalms 8 and 9, verse 34, God says, I will not alter the words that have gone out of my mouth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I have sworn this covenant is settled. This covenant will not change. This covenant is established. Amen? Now, here is the thing. For you to be successful in life and to deal wisely in the affairs of life and make your way prosperous and have good success, your heart and my heart must be established in the covenant. Are you with me? Your heart must be established in the covenant. Why am I mentioning that? Because meditating is what is going to take for your heart to be established in the covenant. We don't have time to turn to it, but in Psalms 112, it describes the man, the man who delights in the law of God, who delights in God's word, and who fears God and reverences him. 
and out of that delight in the word of God and, 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 and his fear and his reverence for God. The Bible says because of his lifestyle, and actually it was one of meditating if we had time to get into it. Um, what happened is that his, the Bible says wealth and riches will be in his house. And then it goes on to say in verse 6 and 7 of Psalms 112 that even if there's evil tidings and there is bad news comes, it don't shake him. Why? Because his heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, it's established in the covenant so that if there's bad news, if there is bad, eco bad economy, bad report, none of those things move in because he knows in whom he has believed. He knows he's got a covenant with God. He's got a covenant with the one with whom all things are possible that is working on his behalf. And if it's possible to God, it's possible to him because the two of them are one. Through the covenant. Are you with me? And because the covenant is so real and his heart is so established in it, he has more confidence in that which he cannot see than, what, than that which he can see. And it is meditating in the word of God can, that can make the unseen so real to you that what you see is secondary. Amen? The Lord said this to me. If you can see it, you can believe it. And I know the word says seeing is believing, but they're talking about physically. But if you can see it in the realm of the spirit, if you can see it as done, if you can see the way God sees it, regardless of the circumstances, you'll be able to believe it. And meditating in the word of God will bring you to that place. In Habakkuk says, I will sit upon the wall and I will watch until I can see what the Lord is saying unto me. When I can see it, then I'm going to run with it. I'm going to write it, make it plain and run with it. Are you with me? Meditating can bring you to that place. Meditating can make the unreal real to you. You see, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Truth is reality. But that truth has to become a reality in your heart. Meditating is bringing the word of God from your head into your heart. So that your heart can be established in the covenant of God. And when your heart is established in the covenant of God, the covenant will work for you and the end result is prosperity. The end result is success. Are you with me? Amen? Hallelujah. So, um, now Psalms 1 describes, puts it this way. Psalms 1 says, um, blessed is the man that, that, that delighted, let me read it, flip over there, Psalms 1. I'm just trying to convince you that meditating in the word is important. First of all, because, just like it says in Joshua, it will make your way prosperous and you'll have good success as you meditate in the word um, in a, in, in, in a biblically correct manner. Psalms 1, Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, Psalms 1, but his delight, say delight, delight. Now again, one of the prerequisites to meditate in the word properly is you have got to have respect for God's word. You have got to magnify his word above all else. You have got to put his word first. You have got to believe God's word. And, and you have got to delight in his word. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. What happens? He becomes like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He becomes like a tree, not a shrub. <laughs> Amen. He becomes like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth his fruit in a season. His leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Is that success? Whatever he does will prosper. He will deal wisely in the affairs of men. Flip over with me to Jeremiah chapter 17. Meditation is a master key to getting your heart established in the word of God, getting your heart established in the covenant, and it is the master key to prosperity because the word of God is the biggest key to prosperity. Amen? And meditation takes the word of God and engrafts it in your heart. Meditation takes the word of God and dumps, the, and dumps what's in the word into your heart. And in the word there is spirit and there is life and it dumps it into your heart. When that spirit and life get dumped in your heart, nobody can stop your success. That is why it says in Proverbs chapter 4, My son, attend unto my word. Incline your ear unto my saying. Keep it as front lips before you. Keep it before your eyes. Get it into the midst of your heart. For it is life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. It is life to those that can get to that point. Getting it in their heart. It is life. The life of God and health to all their flesh. Amen. 
Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The word of God, when the word gets into your heart and it dumps its life and its spirit and its nature on the inside of you, then that's power. That's power. And that's where and that is and it cannot help but produce. And that is the whole objective of meditating. Amen. Are you with me? So Jeremiah chapter 17 says, reading from verse 5, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is a man that trusted in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. You see, when you make the, the flesh and your, and, and your own natural ability and your own, your, own, your own performance and your own works and your own intellect and all of that stuff, when that's where your confidence is, the Bible says that person is going to end up in a curse. Because, anyway, and, and his heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat, like the heat in the desert. That's like a shrub. A person that is naked and destitute in the desert. And he shall not see any good. But he will dwell, dwell in the parched places in the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. But, verse 7. But blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. He shall be like a tree planted by waters that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be greener and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That Psalms 1 all over. Why, the, why is this? Because of meditating in the word of God. Amen? Amen. But before I leave this point, I do want to emphasize that meditating in the word of God will cause... The unseen to become real to you. Say real. Because that's what it is. You see, the problem is we might make a confession right now about, G, about, about prosperity, about the blessing of the Lord, making you rich and add no sorrow with it. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the Lord and the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And we can make all those confessions. And it might sound good coming out of your mouth. And your head might even say, yeah, that sounds good. However, until you can, but it has to become so real to you where you can almost see it. Where, 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 it becomes more, where, where it becomes a reality in your heart. And it is not going to become a reality in your heart just because you have the revelation or just because you're able to make the confession. It becomes a reality in your heart when the word dumps its life out into your heart. Are you with me? Amen? Thy word have I hidden. That have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against thee. At the light in, uh, what does it say? Um, um, it says Psalms 40 and verse, four, verse 8. Um, you don't need to flip there. I, I just got to flip fast. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Amen? It is getting that word in your heart. That's what it's all about. And, and part of meditation is so that you can see the unseen. Are you with me? So that the unseen could become real to you. Amen? I'll come back to that. In other words, yes, let me deal with it right now. In the same way, and I've used this example before. Can you imagine, I mean... Can you imagine here you have an, a, 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 a chair here, a wooden chair, four legs, all right? Here is this guy. He's like 300 pounds. And you tell him, hey, this chair is solid. This chair is designed to carry up to, up to about like, to carry someone that is 800 pounds. You only 300 pounds. Go ahead, have a seat on it. Amen? But he sits on the chair. Bam! The chair shatters. He falls and hurts himself. Amen? Even though there was all the scientific information about how strong the chair is and all of that, etc. And he hurts himself. And then later on, he's in another service and you tell him again, Here, have a seat in this chair. It's strong. It can carry a man up to a thousand pounds. Do you think he might be a little hesitant? Why is that? Because the experience that he had from his fall, him having a fall and hurting himself is real to him. Amen? And it has made an impact. Right? And it's a physical reality to him. Have you ever had a nightmare and, wake, and, and, then you, and then you wake up and you realize, oh, thank God I was just dreaming. Have you ever done that? Thank God that was just a dream. Because, man, it seems so real. Are you with me? That's like a soulish, mental experience. That physical fall is a physical experience. Well, here, God gives us meditation as a means by... Because, you see, experiences convince us. Experiences as a way of convincing us. It does something to our psyche. So God wants to give you a spiritual experience 
so that the, the unseen, so that what he says in his word could be so real to you, just as it is to that man that fell on the floor, just as that nightmare is to you, even more real than that. And so the process that God has given us to accomplish that is called meditation, biblical meditation. Are you with me? And God, and basically once you get there, and as far as, as far as the way this stuff works, is that once you can see it, it's as good as done. Because once you can see it, man, you have no problem believing it. And he that believe it have. God says to Jeremiah in chapter 1, I think verse 5 or something like that. Um, God says, Jeremiah, what have you seen? What do you see? Is it? No, it's up verse 11, sorry. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 going on to verse 12. And he says, what do you see? And he says, I see this almond tree and I see this and I see that. And God says, you have well seen. And I will watch over my word to perform it. In other words, Jeremiah, because you have seen well, because you are seeing what other men can see, because you are seeing in the realm of the spirit, and because you are seeing it as done, because you can see it, I'm going to watch over my word and I'm going to perform it. I'm going to bring it to pass. In other words, when you can see it, God is obligated to do it. Are you with me? That was the process that he did with Abraham. Amen. Giving him all those experiences so he could get to the place where he could see himself as the father of many nations and see Sarah, amen, as beautiful and rejuvenated and strong to bring forth children at 90 something years old. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So I want to just emphasize that, that biblical meditation brings you into that place where you know that you know that you know that you know and, I, and nobody can talk you out of it. Amen. And that's where God wants us to be. Because the Bible says, hey, only believe. When we can believe in that manner, all things become possible unto us because it puts us with God, and with God all things are possible. And with him, success. The Bible says that Josh, Joseph was a prosperous man in, in um, I, um, Genesis 39 verse 2. He was prosperous because God was with him. And you know, at that time, Joseph was still in a lot of trouble. Amen? We didn't see Joseph with silver and gold, but God said he was prosperous. Why? Because God was with him. Are you with me? Biblical meditation puts you with God and God with you. God in a place where he can manifest himself in you and through you. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Again, biblical meditation will cause you to be prosperous, not just in one area, but in many areas. Paul told Timothy, meditate upon these things, give yourself wholly unto them, and, 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 you, will make, and you will be profitable not only unto you. And I'm, I'm misquoting that scripture, so let me correct it. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. I don't want to spend much time on it. Meditate upon these. Give yourself wholly to them. That means immerse yourself. There's a nice understanding about meditation. It's immersing yourself in the word of God. Amen. And when you immerse yourself in the word of God, it's only a matter of time and the word will abide in you. And when the word abides in you and you are abiding in him, what happens? You ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Amen. It's not just a good message that will make you successful. It's not just, um, it's not just um, having a revelation or knowing this or knowing that. It's not just having understanding. It is the word of God working in your life. Hallelujah. That produces. The word is what produces. If you look at the whole armor of God that is able to quench every fiery dart of the devil and so on and so forth, you see all of the armor of God is made up out of the word of God. All of it. In other words, what is, what is the Bible saying? God is saying be clothed with the word and then get the sword of the spirit and let the word fight the fight. Let the word fight the fight. Amen? Word fight the fight. Let the word fight your fight. You win. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Amen? Everything is naked and defenseless before the word. Say I'm the word of God going someplace to happen. Yet not I, but Christ in me. Say I'm the word of God in me, on me, around me, going someplace to destroy the works of the devil and establish the kingdom of God establish heaven's government here on this earth. Hallelujah. Man, you and your awesome self. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. And I don't believe it means that your profiting may appear unto everybody. It might include that, but that your profiting might appear in every single area. I believe it means that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So, all right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Turn with me to Acts chapter 6. 
Hallelujah. Acts chapter 6. Glory to God. Acts chapter 6. Say, I'm convinced that biblical med meditation is my way to total success. I am being convinced. I set my heart. I want to be convinced <laughs> that biblical meditation is my way to biblical success. And I'm going to have it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. All right. Acts chapter 4 and verse 6. No, Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. Um, I think it was Peter that spoke up and said, We will give ourselves continually. Say continually. Say it again. One more time. Now you notice that in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Day and night. Continually. Proverbs chapter 4. Attend unto my word, incline your ear unto my saying, don't let them depart from your eyes continually. Amen. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, he says, let it be like front, let it be before your eyes, let it be on your doorpost, let it be on your wrist, let it be here, let it be there, continually. Paul told Timothy, meditate upon these things, give yourself wholly unto them, immerse yourself into them, continually. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and the word of God is going to become a reality to you. And, you'll be, and it will produce freedom in your life. That's my paraphrase. Amen. Continually. Say continually. So he says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now at first glance, you might think Peter's saying, are we going to give ourselves continually to pray? And we're going to give ourselves continually to keep ministering the word to people. We are going to preach, man. We're going to preach till we drop. Amen. <laughs> but I don't believe that's what he's saying. Of course, it includes that to some degree, but not till you drop. <laughs> but he says we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word. In other words, the word of God has an assignment on it, and God has sent his word to minister to you. Amen? The word of God has a ministry that it needs to perform in your life, to you, for you, and so on. And Paul and Peter is saying that we, I am going to allow my, I'm going to position myself and let the word of God accomplish its ministry in me. Can you imagine if the word of God had its own way in your life and accomplish what the word of God wills and desires and purposes? If the word of God could accomplish what the word of God wants to in your life, would you be successful? Did you get that? Man, that's awesome. Think about it. So he says, I'm gonna, we're going to give ourselves continually, continually. I am going to position myself and let the word of God accomplish its ministry in me and through me. Woo! Well, how do you do that? Meditating in the word. So meditating in God's word, biblical meditation, gives the word of God the right of way in your life. Do you know the Bible also says that because of the vain traditions of men, they've made the word of God of none effect? In other words, vain traditions, wrong thinking can stop the word of God from working in your life. But here, this is saying that biblical meditation, instead of stopping the word, it will give the word a right of way, a free course in your life. Can you see that? That's so important. All right, now, I'm going to say something here that I think is tremendously important. And I'm talking about why biblical meditation is so important. Can I, can, the Bible says in, um, in, 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 in James that we must not be hearing the word but the doer of the word. And then it goes on to say that, that um, the doer of the word is going to have good success and prosper in all that he does. Before I go there though, let me say this. Look at Joshua 1 verse 8 again. Or, 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 or listen to it with me. Amen? Listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you might observe to do according to all that is written therein. Meditate day and night that you might observe to do according to all that is written therein. It did not say meditate therein day and night 
and I didn't say meditate day and, day and night and do the word. No, it says observe to do. In other words, if you don't meditate and if you don't observe, see what is not seen. If you don't meditate, you are not going to be able to do what is written therein. In other words, doing the word of God is not automatic. Are you with me? But if you meditate on the word, it's going to make you a doer of the word. Now, if you were to fast forward, yes, let's fast forward. Where are you? Where are you writing on your Bible? Joshua. Anybody else? Joshua? Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy since it's close by. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm simply making this point that meditating in God's word will make you a doer of the word. Wouldn't you like to be a bona fide doer of the word? Amen? As opposed to just thinking that, oh, the do the word, being a doer of the word means the Bible says rejoice. And rejoice means jump up, spin around, and shout. So I'm going to jump up, spin around, and shout. It's good to jump up, spin around, and shout. That's okay. Amen? And that's being a doer word to some degree. But I believe there is more to it than that. Amen? You see, the word can impregnate you. The word itself is pregnant. That's why the word is always giving birth to something. You can go back to an old scripture that you thought you knew. And you're going to find that that word of God, was, that word of God is going to produce, some, produce another baby. <laughs> you'll find you get a brand new thought. You'll get a brand new inspiration. You'll get a brand new revelation. You're going to get some further insight than what you had before. Amen? Or that thing that you had before will come again fresh. The word of God is pregnant and is continually producing. And it will produce in you. Amen? All right. Where would I say? Deuteronomy 30 verse 14. The, and the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach. Skip, skip, skip. Let's go down to... No, 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 sorry. Oh, 30 verse 14. I was reading the wrong verse. I'm sorry. 30 verse 14. But the word is nigh thee, very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that what? That you may do it. In other words, if it's not in your mouth and in your heart, you won't be able to do it. Amen? You're not going to be able to do it just because you heard it. But it's got to be in your heart. How does it get in your heart? By meditating in the Word. And keep getting the Word in your mouth is part of the process of meditating. Don't let this Word depart from your mouth. But meditate day and day and night so it could get into your heart. And when it gets into your heart, then you'll be able to do it. What am I saying? Meditating in the Word will make a doer of the Word out of you. Amen? Flip back to Deuteronomy 29. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 29, verse 9. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Keep the words of this covenant and do them. Okay, that one is not as explicit, so let me move on. Okay, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm trying to make this point that in order to be a doer of the word, you need to meditate in the word. Meditating in the word will make a doer of the word out of you. Amen? I don't know about you, but I know I need to be a doer of the word if I'm going to have the success that the word has promised and that the God wants me to have. James chapter 1 verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own heart. If any man be a hearer and not a doer, he's like a man that beholds his natural face in a mirror and he beholdeth himself and goeth away straightway. He forgets what manner of man he was. But whoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue it, say continue it. Does that sound like meditation again? Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer. You see, when you meditate in the word and you stay in the word, then you don't forget what it says. Amen? Then you remember, thy word have I hid in my heart. Um, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is it say in Psalms 119? Psalms 119, um, so, something along that same line. Psalms 119, I think verse 6, 15 and 16. About um, memorizing the word. Where it says in Psalms 119 and verse 16, I will, I will delight myself in thy, in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. How did that happen? By delighting in the word. And when you delight in the word, you will meditate in the word. I will not forget my word. Here in James, it says, not being a forgetful hearer. Why? Because of delighting in the word. And then it goes on to say, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, 
This man shall be blessed in his deed. Why? Because of being a doer. Because of meditating. Because of staying in it. Now, when you back up to verse 22, it says, Don't be a doer of the word, but be a hearer. If you be a doer, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own heart. But before verse 22 comes verse 21, which says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. In other words, when that word becomes engrafted in you, that's what it takes for you to become a doer. And that process of it becoming engrafted is meditating in the word of God. Are you with me? Amen? But I'm saying that before you can become a doer of the word, the word needs to be engrafted in you. You need to meditate in the word and that will make you a doer of the word. When the word of God is just you see, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen? An angry man doesn't have to figure out how he's going to be angry. How he's going to act angry. It's spontaneous. You put him in a certain situation, bam, he blow up. Why? Because he's an angry person. He has angry thoughts. Amen? So what happens when that word becomes you? You will just spontaneously act out the word. It will be the way you think. And the way you think is the way you are. And the way you are is the way you'll become. Is the way you'll manifest. Amen? So what I'm saying is meditating in the word will make a doer of the word out of you. All right. I need to move a little quicker. So let me just make a few couple comments quickly. And then let's move to this next point. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. You don't need to look at it. But it says that you and I are changed from glory to glory. While we behold the word of the Lord. While we behold as in the mirror the glory of the Lord. We are changed. How many times you would love to change in a particular area or you'd want to see somebody else change? Well, we always want to see somebody else change, but forget about them. Deal with you. <laughs> How does change take place? The way you really change is the word of God is what changes you. And when you meditate in the word, it can change you into the very image of what you see. The word of God is able to bring about that transformation. It is able to reprogram your thinking, renew your mind. Amen. We talk about renewing of your mind. But your mind is not renewed simply because you know what the Word of God says on a subject. Your mind is renewed when you think in line with the Word of God. When you automatically think the way the Word of God is written. Are you with me? Amen. And it takes some reprogramming for that to happen. It doesn't just take knowing what it says. Another benefit of meditating in the Word of God is that it will open the door to revelation knowledge. Psalms 119, I can't remember the verse, but it says... Somewhere around verse 99, somewhere there. It says, I have more understanding than my teachers because I've made your word my delight and meditation. Amen. In other words, meditation knowledge will open up the door for you to get revelation knowledge, insight and understanding. Amen. Another thing is, meditating in God's word will cause light to shine upon your pathways. Right. And will cause you to walk in the way of the Lord. You can look this up and study it out. I'm not going to go through it because of time. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 to 23. All right? Go back and check that out. All right. Now, what is biblical meditation? I've already mentioned several things about it as we've been going along. So I can do this quickly. Number one, it's getting the word of God into your heart. Moving it from your head and getting it into your heart. Amen? Psalms 37 and verse, and verse 31 says, The law of his God is in his heart. And none of his steps shall slide. How would you like to be able to live in a manner where your steps don't slide? Where you don't miss it? Would you like that? <laughs> right? Where you don't miss it? Well, it says the law of God is in his heart. Amen? And if you go to Peter, Peter will tell you that if you allow these things to happen, right, you will not stumble. And you're going to have a glorious entrance into the kingdom of God. Meditating on God's word will get the word of God in your heart. So it's part of... So what is biblical meditation? Is getting the word of God dung into your heart. Getting the word engrafted into your heart. The Bible says that when your word is out of the abundance of the heart, then the mouth speaks. When the word of God is in your heart in abundance, you see it's easy to just make a statement, buy his stripes some heal, or to make a statement, my God supplies all my need. But if you don't really believe that, if it's not in your heart in abundance, that word can be very shallow. Instead of that word being a voice, all it is is an echo. You're just echoing what you heard somebody else said. Amen? But the word of God needs to be spirit and life and power and rima coming out of your mouth. For, but for that to happen, the word of God got to be in your heart in abundance. And out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
But how does it get there in abundance? By meditating in it. Are you with me? Amen? So it's getting your word of God in your heart in abundance. Now, you know, and the Bible says in, in, in Matthew 12, verse 35, out of the good treasure of a man's heart, he brings forth good. Out of the good treasure. In other words, then where does the treasure, out, the treasure, the riches, the prosperity, it comes in, and it, it comes through your heart. That's where the kingdom of God is. It is within us. Amen? In other words, all that will come on the outside comes from the inside. Which also means there's a lot of things you don't have on the outside, and it's because you don't have it on the inside. I know that sounds rude and mean, but it's the truth. I know there's a particular preacher, uh, um, and I'm going to quote him just so that I wouldn't be the one saying it. <laughs> right? But he used to say, no, but he used to say, you know why in the situation you're in, it's your mouth that put you there. He Remember that? <laughs> I remember that, Audrey? That's, he used to say that. He said, it's your mouth that put you there. Amen? Now, and there is some truth to that. Amen. But we don't have time to, to, to prove that out. But the Bible also says the word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And in thy heart. Romans 10 verse 8. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The treasures comes out of your heart. Once you get it in your heart, it's going to manifest in your life. The Bible says you will prosper even as your soul prosper. Amen. Now, on the negative side, and to understand prosperity, let's understand the negative. We talk about complaining, murmuring, worry. Complaining, murmuring, worrying is a form of meditating, but on the negative. But here's what happens when you murmur, complain, and worry. And especially complaining and murmuring. Which means you're not just worrying, but you're giving voice to it. What happens when you do that? Complaining and murmuring is a form of meditating that releases negative substance over your life. And also gives voice to the devil's will. So when you murmur and when you complain, you just say, devil, I'm going to help you out. You are giving voice to his will. You see, this whole world, all that is happening, it's a battle of words. Whose words are you going to speak? The stout words that the enemy will speak against the most high God or God's word that Jesus, your high priest, can work with. From the very beginning, it was a battle of words when the devil put his words into Eve's mouth to the very end where Jesus is going to destroy the enemy with just the sword of his spirit, which is the word coming out of his mouth. And if you look in Revelation chapter what? Chapter 12, is it? When they talk about accusing the brethren being cast down, if you drop down to about verse 15, you will see the flood that was coming against the woman that was coming out of the mouth of the devil. It was words that he was speaking. Amen? When, the end, when, the, when you build your house upon the rock and all of a sudden the storm came and this came and the flood, that's a bunch of the devil's words. Amen? You must not receive that. You must not speak that. Amen? The Bible says in Psalm 17, I think verse 3 or 4, but by the words of God's mouth, I have kept me from the pathway of the destroyer. I've kept myself out of the devil's pathway by keeping God's word in my mouth. That is why it says... I must not, you must, Joshua, you want to have good success? Don't let the word of God leave your mouth and put something else in there. Don't allow murmuring. Don't co allow complaining. Don't even allow worry. Don't even take that negative thought and think it. Amen? Amen. Now, no, meditating is the, is the opposite, but it's on God's word. I'm trying to get you an understanding of God's, of meditating. Okay, now here's what I want to say. It is a process that God has provided to make spiritual things Real to you. Just like, just like a headache is real. Just like, like stumbling, hitting your foot again, your toe against a post in the middle of the night when it's dark is real. Just like a nightmare could be real is a soulish reality. Well, in the same way, God has designed and has given you meditation so that the word of God could be real to you. So it could become totally real to you that God is able to do above and beyond what I could ever ask or think. So it could become totally real to you and I that truly the chastisement and the price and the penalty for my wholeness was upon him and by his stripes I am healed. Surely I am not ashamed of the gospel that reveals his grace because it is the power of God Unto wholeness, salvation, protection, deliverance. Because in that gospel, the righteousness of God, which is a gift, is revealed. Are you with me? Right? It is meditation that is, that is designed to make those wonderful things not just be something that we say with the right emphasis, but make it a reality 
in our eyes, in our spiritual eyes. Amen? Hallelujah. How do we meditate? Now, let me give you a couple of things. Now, the word meditate means to muse, to ponder, um, and to plan in the mind, to purpose, to intend. It implies to resolve something in the mind. And it also is translated imagine. In a general sense, now this is a general sense, okay? And I do mean this is, this is a general sense that probably, this is a general sense. What I'm really talking about here, quite frankly, and I don't mean to be, to try to sound deep. But what I'm talking, what I've been talking about so far about meditating is really trying to show you how you can meditate in a deep manner that God has intended. What I'm about to mention here is in some ways, it's good, but it's somewhat shallow. But it is still a place to start, all right? And many of us do that. There is a general sense of meditating that is a topical study, where you take a topic and you study redemption or you study baptism or you study tongues and you read all the scriptures and you see what it says and you analyze it. There is that sense. And that's okay. That is good for teaching. Amen? A lot of the time I do that in order to teach. Amen? Then there is an expository study where you can study this verse after verse after verse and see how they connect up and how they relate. Then you can stand there as a word study where you can find out well, what does this word mean, what is the root of it, etc., etc. Then there is... Um, then you can, of course, meditate on the entire passage, entire Isaiah chapter 53. Jesus is our substitution and so on and so forth. God will want to travail of his soul and be satisfied how he was bruised and how God made his soul an offering for sin. And we can see that picture of redemption. There is that form of meditation. And that's fine. And you ought to do those. Amen. But what I'm talking about is a little bit more than that. What I'm talking about is the way you can take, a cow will take green grass, chew it so long, bring it back up, chew it some more, that that green grass can become white milk. <laughs> Are you with me? That's what I'm talking about. All right? All right. As I said, there's a couple of conditions. Number one, the integrity, you must have a respect for God's word. And then number two, it's very important to understand that God is good and the devil is a thief. Amen? All right, now, number one. So, here are, so here's a couple of ways, Num and I'm just going to give you about five or six things, but you need to do it. Number one, ponder. Ponder or muse, just pondering on the Word of God. Now, I'm going to try to move as quickly as I can, because this here is information. Psalms 4, verse 4 says, for instance, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Communing, musing, thinking about that verse of scripture. And, and I'm telling you, in bed is one of the most wonderful places to meditate on the word of God. Going to sleep and waking up. I'm telling you, I think that's why he says night and day. And by the way, it could be night and day or it could be day and night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, um, here's, a, here's a good one. Um, Psalm 63 and verse 6. That says, come on, Psalm 63 and verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Amen? Meditate, roll in that scripture wrong. Now, of course, when you have the scripture memorized, you could roll it wrong. So memorizing is part of meditating, but it's not the whole story. Quoting the verse of scripture, because you have concorded, doesn't mean that you've meditated on it and it has become your thoughts. Because that's the whole point. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. But I've given you my word so that you can meditate in it and make my thoughts your thoughts. Change your thoughts and exchange your thoughts for mine. Amen? So pondering, musing, that's one step. Pondering, rolling it around. Number two, mutter. Mutter under your bed. Bread. Now, you've done that negatively. Right? <laughs> I'm not going to give an illustration. Right? But mutter, but muttering the word on their breath. By his stripes I'm healed. Surely he bore my sicknesses and carried my infirmities. The same spirit that raised up Christ in the dead is quickening my mortal body. It's giving life and energy and strength and revitalizing every cell. And just muttering it, muttering it, muttering it. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. By his stripes I'm healed. Muttering it. And then there is confessing the word. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Confessing, saying what God says. Now, because we're talking about this, ponder, mutter, confess. Say that to me. Ponder, mutter, confess. Just for illustrations, like ponder is like a quiet version. It's like on a railing wall. That's the ponder. Amen? And then there is the mutter, right? 
There were people seeing your mouth, your lips are moving, but they can't hear anything. That's the, that's the, the end is confession. By his stripes I'm healed. Can you see that? It, just on a slightly different level, but it's all the process of meditating. Did you get that? Now, in addition to that, it is keeping it before your eyes. It says this book, Lord, um, Proverbs chapter 4, Attend unto my word, incline your ear unto my saying, keep it as front lit before your eyes. In other words, writing it and sticking it in a mirror, putting it on your dashboard, putting it in a place where you can see it is practical and it's good. Amen? Putting it where you can see it, that's, that's, that's a form of meditating. Deuteronomy chapter 11 talks about that. Number, number 5, and this is important, imagine or visualize. Right? I don't have time to connect it up right now, but I know in Psalms 2 when it talks about a wicked man imagining vain things, that same word imagine is the same word used in Psalms 1 as meditate. Amen? The same word is translated both. So it is using your imagination, imagining, visualizing, seeing it happen. Again, if you can see it, you're going to believe it. Amen? Habakkuk says that I will sit upon the wall and I'm going to watch to see what he says to me. How am I going to see what he says? When I can and visualize, when I can visualize, when I got it in my heart. Amen. So imagining is very important to sit and see yourself heal. Sit and see and just, just take those bills and just put them all over the table and just watch them and laugh at them and just see all those bills paid. Right paid over all of them. Big, see a big debt free sign. See, see, oh no man, nothing but love. See it. Amen? If you see it, it's just a matter of time and it's going to come to pass. Maybe that new car, that house, whatever it is. Maybe that freedom, whatever it is. You can see it, you can have it. Are you with me? If you can see it, you can have it. Amen? All right. Um, and then, of course, there are others. And that's, that's on, I'm just going to call number six, others, which is many, many things. Taking it and making a song out of it. Praising God over it. Studying. Um, making notes. All of those other things are all forms of meditating. Ultimately, quite frankly, meditating in the Word is continually, um, let me put it this way, continually and excessively interacting with the Word of God. Immersing yourself continually and in interacting with the Word of God in as many ways as you can. Pondering it, muttering it, Confessing it, speaking it, put, writing it on the dashboard, visualizing it, praising God over it, studying it, all of that stuff. And then, and then, there are, then of course, there's another process which has to do with applying. The, how does this word apply to me personally? How does this word apply to my life? What changes do I have to make if this is true? What can I do? And then, and then here is a very important one. Allowing the Holy Spirit to work with you. To make the word real to you. Ask him to pray in tongues. You see the Bible says, let him pray in tongues that he might interpret. But people think that if I pray in tongues, then I, then I got to have an interpretation come right away. And that's what it means to pray in tongues that let him pray that he might interpret. Yes, it does include that. But many times you can just pray in tongues. And as you are praying in tongues, what happens is an understanding will come on the inside. Amen. And then maybe later on something will just show up and you will get the interpretation. And I'll just pray in tongues and give the Holy Ghost to work on the inside of you. There's a scripture that basically translates in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. This is my version. If you, when you pray in tongues, you promote spiritual growth. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's stop there for now. Right? And again, one of the most wonderful, important places you can meditate is meditating on who you are in Christ. Learning to see who you are in Christ. Because when you see and believe who you are, you're going to start acting accordingly. Amen? When you start, you see, stupid people act stupid. You, I mean, if you keep telling yourself, I'm stupid, this is not going to work, this is, you're going to operate accordingly. But you know, when you hold yourself to a higher standard, when you, instead, when you, when you start seeing yourself, as not being limited by the world. When you start seeing yourself as more than a conqueror. When you start seeing yourself as a representative of the highest government in the universe. When you start seeing yourself as the salt of the earth. As the light of the world. As an ambassador of Christ. When you start seeing yourself a certain way. It will, you will start acting accordingly. Amen. Your believing will affect how you act. Amen. And meditating is going to help that whole process. Amen. 
I cannot emphasize to you enough how important it is to meditate on the Word of God. And if I may say so, it's perhaps one of the things that believers do the very least of. And when they do, they do it on a very shallow level. Amen? The topical studies, yes, they do that. They run in the concordance, they do that. But we need more than that. Just take that one verse of scripture that you need to grow up <laughs> and produce and just go to sleep with it. Wake up with it. Speak it day and night thousands and thousands of times until it becomes your very own thought, until it becomes you. Amen? And I guarantee you upon the authority of God's word, you will have the results. Your profiting will appear unto all. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Amen. Do you believe what you heard today? Do you believe this is important? This is life indeed. Amen. Do you think you can do Do you think you need any special qualifications for this? What kind of education you got to have? What your background have to be? No. You don't have to, I mean, you were born again. You were a child of God. Man, if you had enough sense to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, then you have all that it takes to effectively meditate in the Word of God. Father, we just want to thank you for your Word today. Lift up your hands. Say, so Lord, I thank you. For your word. Make me a meditator in your word. Help me, Lord. Release that grace within me to ponder your word, to mutter your word, to confess your word, to be immersed in your word, so that your word would become one with me. And I would become one with your word, so that you could manifest yourself in me. And through me, and I could go about this life and see you manifested all over this earth and your kingdom established and the works of the devil destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen.